Hey guys, welcome back. So this is sort of a follow-up to my previous video on the green screen application. This is going to be using it with um, Live, and so we're going to be showing you how to set up uh, the virtual camera for OBS, which is the application I use to record and stream, and I think you should too because it works pretty well. So to start, you're going to need to download um, OBS Virtual Cam. All these links will be in the description. You just click the download button, it'll install it to your OBS without any work on your end. No files to drag or anything, and then when you open OBS, you need to open two instances: one for your for your stream, and then another one that runs the camera. So to do that, I already have OBS open because I'm using it to record. So I'm just going to right-click on OBS icon on my taskbar, and then click OBS Studio, and this will open another one. And it warns you that you're doing this. So you just click Launch anyway, and it launches the software. So then you can see my desktop. I'll just turn that off so we don't get that mirroring effect. And what you're going to want to do is make sure that in tools, virtual cam is listed here. So to set this up, we're going to right click, we're going to click add, and then we're going to click window capture. Click OK, and then we're going to look for the green screen application, which I already have open, just on a different monitor. We see the green screen result, we click OK. Then to make this fit in the middle here, you're just going to go to transform. You're going to click center to screen, then go to transform again and click fit to screen and then we have a big um, not stretched in any way um, view of the green screen and you notice these sides are missing a bit so we're just going to right click and click add and then we're going to go to color source click OK, select color and then um, this is actually going to be 02550 which is the same color I'm using for my green screen you can set your own if you're using it differently and then 1920 by uh, 1080 is I guess not the size of my display, but I can just right click on this and click transform and then uh, fit the screen. And then just going to drag that under my window capture. So this is the green screen camera set up. I guess just a line here. You could just remove that with another color source. But, and I would normally remove this portion because if you can't see, my monitor is visible and it sometimes changes, which creates this hole in the green screen. So that's. Um, all set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click right quick virtual camera and then we're going to go to color source actually yeah the color source. I'm going to click this arrow and so that'll get the positions we want for all of the the camera to capture. So then we can just click start and now this is started our virtual camera. Now the next two things you need are live on Steam and you just click free here and it should pop up asking you if you want to open Steam and just click continue. And this one's much harder to find. It's called Live Viver. And you need this to configure the cameras for Live. So I already have both of these installed. Both of these links will be in the description along with the OBS virtual cam. And so we can start on the Steam end of things. And you're safe to close this, I believe. So in opening Steam, we're going to go to the library, and it's in, in VR, it should be in the, the software category unless you have your Steam configured differently, and we're just going to launch Live for the first time. So what you're going to do in Live is you're going to see that it says Virtual Cam Driver is not installed, so you need to click Install, and you need to make sure Steam VR isn't open, so make sure you've closed whatever you're using for VR, and then it should say success. You'll need to restart Steam VR for the driver to show up. Click OK. And I didn't have Steam VR open, and so I should be fine. Now, what you need to do is you need to actually turn on your controllers, in my case, Windows Mixed Reality controllers, and then click Launch Compositor. Um, I have old configs, so this might use um, a config that I already have set up, but I'm going to go through the setup process with you to get generate a new config. And it looks like it has maybe because my camera's already set up and also my VR and when your VR should start up is you should be able to see um, the headset and your two controllers and then after your two controllers appear you should have the live controller show up like this and then I have a bunch of applications set to launch I guess so it's kind of a mess 
So this is the compositor. This is where your games will show up. If you're in OBS, this is the window you want to capture, and you can do that with a window capture or a desktop capture. It's only 1080p, and my monitor is 1440p. So you're going to see a bit of a exposed window here. But configuring the camera is pretty simple. You just go to camera. Um, you want to add a new camera. And then select the device's OBS camera. And then select one of those resolutions. I'm going to do 920 by 1080p. And it should appear here. And then you're going to want to change the name to something meaningful to you. Um, it's useful to name these better if you have more than one camera. You want to go to calibration and click uh, begin calibration. And this should switch to the Viver window. And I'm going to jump into VR. So here we are in VR. You just want to point your controller at the start calibration button. So calibrate camera. And you're just going to click your trigger once. It just wants you to know that you need the virtual camera controller set up. You want to bring your controller as close to your camera as possible while staying within like this little X thing. And you also want to make sure that it's like flat so the, the camera surface is parallel. And you want to just repeat this process. You see I rotated my hand a little bit there to make sure that the controller facing the camera was flat. It's very important. It's the same orientation for each. And so I'm just staying within the red X the same as I had before. And you can see the controllers set up pretty well. They're a little bit off, and honestly, instead of messing with the settings, I'd just recommend running this again, unless you want to mess with the settings. I noticed it looks really bad with uh, the latency really low, so I'm just going to turn the latency up until it looks a lot better. I do lose tracking here in a second, and you can kind of see that, kind of the extent of Windows Mixed Reality's tracking, but it's strange because you never really encounter that in in-game. You can see it there. It just happened. I found it works best with around 250 milliseconds of latency, for me at least. It might be more or less for you, depending on your setup and your computer. So that's the setup in Live. Um, now I'm going to show you the result on my computer real quick. So now that we're done with that, it should say, when we click to save, it should say success. Your new calibration was imported. And we can just click OK, and we click Save. Now what we can do is go to Capture, and then either automatically launch it, or manually launch it. Sometimes the auto doesn't work, so you might need to uh, click the manual way and click target. So if we click auto and we just click launch Beat Saber with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, we should be good to go. And it should launch um, Beat Saber. So now you can see we've launched with uh, Beat Saber active, and we have two windows. This is going to be the actual headsets window. So if we turn that around, so we can see that it moves with that. So you can put that in like the corner of your stream. And then over here is the virtual camera. So this is um, where we virtually positioned the actual uh, webcam. And so this usually for Beat Saber, you want a bit of higher of an angle. So I'd want it closer to my ceiling in this case. But this is just useful for the example. And this will actually show up right behind you and your lightsabers will sync up. I'm not going to show that because it's going to require me changing. And I showed it in the last video anyway. And so this has been a quick tutorial on how to set up Live with Viver. Um, Viver is required for the second part where you're configuring it, but you can do that easily from the Live client and quickly save it. Most people will have you uh, leave, um, leave Live, go into Live Viver, and then generate a config and then use that config, but this works just as well. As you can see, I got a up and running pretty one-to-one -one almost instantly. So thanks you guys for watching. See you in the next one.